thank you very much. Um, first of all, I might have to say that what I present today is very different actually from what I did in the past. I'm really going to give you just a bird's eye view and I'm, I, I fear I'm kind of misusing the term provenance data actually, or abusing the term, but uh, no worries, it's just the smallest possible step into um, provenance research. Uh, what I'm trying to do is the, as the subtitle says, is growing the, the long tail, so the, the less uh, known and less prominent uh, parts of, uh, of the provenance data of our whole system. So just a quick overview. overview, I'll start with some very, very limited historical basics just uh, in so far as they are relevant for uh, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, history of the Berlin State Library, of course. A uh, very, very quick overview of the shelf marks that are uh, relevant to us. Uh, sources for the provenance data, of course. Um, short glance on the data, brief glance on the data. And I'll try to do some uh, examples of analyses that we can do with this kind of data as, as I said, a starting point into provenance research. And at the end, of course, some very, very modest. Uh, conclusions, but I did my best. Okay. Uh, founded 1661 as the uh, Kurfürstliche Bibliothek, the pri private electoral library. Uh, I'm saying this because what is interesting is that already in the very first stages uh, of this institution, there were already some uh, Oriental manuscripts uh, within the holdings. Uh, probably the evidence is not clear, even in the, in the very, very first core of the collection, so the Gründungsbestand, as we say in German, but uh, for sure, um, before 1700, the library acquired a number of manuscripts from uh, early European Orientalists, such as Christian Raue, uh, 400 items in this case. 18th century, not much uh, did happen, but in the 19th century and 20th centuries especially, um, the most intensive uh, phase of acquisition started. Librarians, collectors, brokers, as scholars, as the, the relevant agents. What is interesting uh, for the sources or relevant to know uh, when we uh, want to use the sources on provenance data is that uh, in the beginning, Oriental manuscripts were not uh, treated separately, but within um, the general manuscript collection. Special departments were only founded even for manuscripts at the end of the 19th century and then for Orient and East Asia in the early 20th century. Uh, German partition always um, relevant for the State Library because after the Second World War we had two uh, institutions, one in the East and one in the West, and this also has um, uh, influence on, on the shelf marks and it's important to know. Uh, when we look at the provenance data, but in 1992, the two institutions were reunified uh, as Staatsbibliothek zu Berlin, Preußischer Kulturbesitz. Okay, shelf marks, very, very, very quickly. Um, the more prominent uh, part of uh, our holdings when it comes to provenance data is, are these um, collections that are named after the collection, collectors from whom the library acquired um, the items. So Dietz, Wettstein, Petermann, Sprenger is the most famous names uh, in the field of Middle Eastern manuscripts. And this is already uh, a first step into looking at the provenance. But on the other hand, we have a large share of manuscripts that received anonymous, uh, arbitrary, seemingly arbitrary shelf marks using a numerous current system. And we have also uh, two systems here, uh, one that is used for uh, the very early uh, manuscripts, uh, starting with the very, very early holdings and used up until the end of the 20th century, but um, up to the Second World War uh, in, in the State Library, but then uh, afterwards in the Eastern part or the, the, the Eastern State Library, whereas in the West, HSOR was used, a uh, different system. Looking at the shares, more or less equal distributions or collections, one third and HS or MS or one third, which makes for two thirds that um, need further research when it comes to provenance. Of course, collections also need research, but we have a first 
level provenance information that uh, can serve as a starting point, whereas for the HS or an MS or manuscripts, we need uh, additional sources. For example, or the most important uh, source for provenance as a first step are the accession uh, journals, where the librarians recorded um, any uh, item that uh, came into the library, was acquired by the library. Uh, manuscript uh, department, or um, starting 1822, um, we have uh, sorry, 1828, we have the accession journals for all manuscript material and then in 1919, different sources for the, for the Oriental holdings. I'll um, skip this uh, just quickly. There are other kinds of sources that we can use or that might be of help. And also here it's the same system, but it exists in Excel files, which is uh, quite convenient if you want to uh, use it as uh, data and, and um, do some calculations. Um, oh. We're zooming in into the sources just so that you um, get, get a grasp of how it looks. We're only looking at the right side, so organized chronologically, as I said. Uh, zooming in, we have um, the date at the top, in this case 1845 uh, and September 29. So this is the date when the, the item was um, recorded uh, as having been acquired by the library. It received an accession number. They noted some limited bi biographical information on the item, and most importantly for us, Vendit Asher. So the, the vendor um, is uh, named as Asher, either a person or uh, an entity. We have a price here and the shelf mark, and this is just to remind you that um, the source did not distinguish between, or does not distinguish between Oriental and um, European holdings because this is a Germanic manuscript or whatever. Okay, data. This is how it looks after we um, extracted the information from, from the handwritten sources and put it into a um, machine usable format, um, which is also going to be integrated in, into Kalamos, but it's not yet. Zooming in again, the same example we just had, same information, and we uh, enriched it by reference to the integrated authority filed by the German National Library, with, which gives us um, additional information, in this case that um, Escher was a bookseller based in Berlin. Um, so, working with the data, I tried to do some um, as I said, bird's view perspective um, calculations, uh, just to give you an overview. This is an acquisition timeline for the, only for the MSR items. I know it's very small um, and it starts, so the, 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 um, the horizontal dimension is of course the, the timeline and the vertical dimension is the number of items acquired in each year or recorded in the accession journals as acquired in the, um, respective year. What you see here, very limited activity is the 19th century, but if we combine this with the data on collections, uh, shelf marks that uh, use the collector's names, we can um, add the names to the peaks. <clears throat> and we still have to question what the, the uh, blue peaks can tell us about the provenance. These are 11 different provenances. If we look at the data we have for the MSR manuscripts, we have more than 500 provenance, provenances, different provenances for this uh, time frame. Just as a side note, 256 for the HSR post Second World War manuscripts. Acquired post Second World War, of course. To look at the data differently, um, a view that shows us very clearly this uh, idea of the, of the long tail of uh, provenance data. If you look, again, the, the, the vertical dimension is um, the, the number of items. And the horizontal dimension, uh, you, you can't read anything here, I know, but it's uh, names. So it's uh, individual names 
that acquired it sold or donated at least one uh, item to the library and you can see a very limited number of provenances attached to high numbers of items and a long tail of uh, provenances attached to quite a few items only. Again, same idea, different view. Um, we have, uh, for example, 30% uh, of, of the items so, and uh, more than uh, 3,500 uh, individual items acquired from uh, individuals or institutions that sold more than 500 uh, items in this case, and it, and it descends. Uh, I'm not going to go, go through this in detail, but just to give you an idea, this 32% uh, of items were acquired from only four different provenances. Uh, here we have 15, and if we then look at this uh, small 6% share of the holdings, we get more than five, 400 provenances for only this, these 6% uh, of the holdings. To break it further down, Pareto principle, for those of you who are familiar with that, 80-20 rule, so 80% of the items acquired from only 20% of the provenances and vice versa. Top 10 vendors, to make it more uh, concrete, 37% um, of the holdings acquired from the top 10 vendors represented in the data. To those, or for those who have worked with the holdings, it's not a surprise that Oscar Rescher is actually the top uh, vendor in this, um, within the MS or manuscripts. And then we have individuals like uh, Bagwandas Kivaldas, Hirsemann, Bühler, and uh, Führer, who dealt in South Asian manuscripts, as far as I know, mainly. And then again, some individuals um, with Arabic, Ottoman, Persian manuscripts. And conveniently for me, I don't have to go into detail because we have, oh, sorry. We have, uh, you should see actually um, checkboxes here, but um, so four of these individuals we have papers on at this conference. I think they will. Uh, come today or tomorrow and for some um, more or less prominently uh, people less prominently present in the data we also have um, papers okay this uh, again integrates the the various uh, timelines we can add names to the peaks again just as a Small side note, uh, names for the peaks uh, post-Second World War period, a teaser uh, for a talk that will come later today, uh, why I put uh, Resha in quotation marks. I won't tell you, but you will hear about this in the afternoon. Just as an example, what else we could, um, we could extract from the data, a top 10 places in this case, Istanbul ranks first, I'd say only because of, of Russia, or it's clear from the data that it's because of Russia, because we have 1,500 uh, manuscripts or items in total, and 1,200 of these items um, acquired from Russia. But I think the main idea we can get from this overview is the, the presence of uh, European places, actually, and only Istanbul, Cairo, and, and Bombay as places um, connected to the original origin of the of the items and this is also this also resonates with the uh, names of the individuals that are present in the data so it's really an overwhelming uh, share of the individuals that have european backgrounds or european names and only a very limited amount of of individuals with uh, middle eastern south asian whatever names Sorry for these conclusions. Uh, they are very modest, as I said, but just to wrap this up, uh, items and provenances follow this 80-20 rule. Sorry. Uh, so from most individuals, the library acquired only a few items, whereas, whereas the library acquired most of the items from only a few individuals. Europeans are responsible for most of the transactions, and most of the transactions took place actually within uh, uh, Europe. Uh, various types of booksellers, of course, this is quite obvious, uh, scholars, bibliophiles, travelers, very few institutions, but they are also represented. And, of course, various types of sales, 
so professional booksellers or brokers as, as Oscar Rescher as well as for example, professors who uh, within their career uh, acquired one, two, three, five manuscripts at some stage and at the end of their uh, life or actually after their death, um, family members sold them to the library. Quite few donations as far as we can tell now. Of course, this is all work in progress because the data is not yet that refined. We're still working on it, but uh, these are some directions that uh, it gives us at this point. Further research is quite clear that the greatest or the biggest question marks are uh, who the original owners actually were. So local sellers, who were the middlemen, because this is the information that this very uh, top level data can't, can't give us. Um, it's just, it, as I said, the smallest step into the direction of provenance research. Yeah, as I said, you'll find the data on, on Kalamas. It will be uh, integrated with the, with the um, entries. So with each item, you will find uh, at the end the provenance that we could uh, extract from uh, this, these handwritten accession journals. Uh, some references, I won't go into that, but I'll thank you for your attention. <laughs>